And in that mood of worship, I want us to read these portions of scripture. If it can be screened, it will be powerful. Hallelujah. We are reading 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17. I would have wished that we read the whole chapter of, of uh, 1 Samuel 17. But because of time, I've decided that we, we just pick some portions which we'll be reading. The first portion I would like us to read is 1 Samuel 17, 28 to 29. We're also going to read a second portion, which is 1 Samuel 17, 33. And then we'll also read a third portion of 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 45. 47. First Samuel 17, 28 to 29. The Bible says, Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. 29. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? First Samuel seventeen thirty three. And David said, First Samuel seventeen thirty three. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth. And he, for you are a youth, and he, a man of war from his youth. Hallelujah. And let's read the last portion, which is First Samuel 17, 45 to 47. 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. Hallelujah. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air. And the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know. There is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with a sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. And the very last one, and the very last one. And the very last one, 48, 49, and 50. Hallelujah. The very last one, 48. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David 
that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you this morning. We are standing in your presence. We are thirsty for your word. We want to hear from you, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Jehovah Father. Minister to us in a very special and very personal way. Jehovah Lord, we are ready for you. Lord, I pray this morning that I'll decline and that you may increase in me to deliver that which you want your people to hear this morning. Thank you, Lord. We celebrate you, Lord. Now, but Shangli Yesu kwa makofi mazuri. Oh, pige Yesu makofi mazuri. Wow. Amen. We thank God for his word this morning. And I celebrate you guys. You may have your seats. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you. If you meant to clap, please clap for them well. In the name of Jesus. Hey, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. friction unapopiga makofi inasaidia pia kufukuza baridi. Hallelujah. How are you this morning? How are you this morning? Tuko wazima. Situ salamiane za hewani tena. Tusalamiane za hewani. Praise the Lord. I believe you have your neighbor again. Just turn to your neighbor. Mwambie pokea salamu za huyu mchungaji. Anaitua Geoffrey Were. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And by the way. Wow. So, kuna jirani karibu na wewe. Mumbi, and by the way, mimi ni meokoka. Mimi na mpenda kristo yesu. Na wiki yaku imekuwaje. And, praise the Lord. That's why you need a neighbor. Praise the Lord. Stumpige su makofi mazuri. Amen. Asubuhi ya leo ama this morning I want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity God has given me to share his word to us and as pastors rightly said God never and hardly he never gathers his people in vain always when he brings us together he has something very special and specifically for you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I want to talk about a topic that uh, thrills my heart, that excites me, that pushes me to a corner of reminding myself whom I am in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this morning, I'll be talking about conquering. Hallelujah. Conquering. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Conquering. So you come and you what to conquer, what it means to conquer. Hallelujah. Conquering. Conquering the giants in your life. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Conquering the
the giants of that giant that is in your life. Today, we are conquering those giants in the name of Jesus. If there is anything I want us to do this morning is to come out of this place having conquered those giants that draw us in our lives. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Na ukweli ukasemwe. The truth is that there are giants in our lives. Giants that we must conquer. Hallelujah. The truth be said, there are giants that we face every day. We face them every morning, every minute. Even when the time when you are coming from home, there must be a giant that you faced this morning. And for you to be in the church today, this morning, seated where you are seated, seated, you had to conquer this giant. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. In the past, we've had giants that we've had to conquer for us. To be where we are. Praise the Lord. And therefore, the truth be told, we all have giants. Giants that must be slain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray that God will help me to try and uh, be very brief but still share that which I wa he wants us to, to know this morning. The portion of, portions of scriptures that we have read in 1 Samuel chapter 17 which I wish that when we, 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 could, we could read the whole of chapter 17. Or when you get home in your good quiet time, just go and read the whole of First Samuel chapter 17, which talks about Goliath and David. Praise the Lord. We will discover a very interesting story in the Bible that we were taught while in Sunday school a very famous story that when it is told to young children is indeed an exciting story. Because that story ends up by glorifying a young boy called David as a hero. A young boy who brought down a giant. Hallelujah. This chapter 17, it opens up by describing Israel and the Philistines facing off in battle. And it talks about David's older brothers who were with the Israelites in the army to fight against the Philistines. And in particular, we'll be focusing on this older brother of David by the name Eliab. And the story continues to tell us that while David was tenting the sheep of his father, Jesse, 
His father Jesse decides one morning and asks David, please, can you go and see your brothers and find out how they're doing in the battlefield with the other Israelite army people? Go and find out how they're doing. And Jesse gives David some food to take to his brothers. And what happens, David being a faithful young man, he leaves the ship into the responsibility of somebody else and rushes to the battlefield to go and meet the brothers and to find out how they were doing and to take the message of their father to them. And when David arrives at the battle, worry, fear, crippling the hearts of the Israelite army. People were so worried. And David being David, he goes there. And he begins to talk to this man of Israel. How is it? How are you doing? How is the battle going on? And he discovers that it is not well. The kind of roaring, wow. The giant Goliath, the way he was roaring to the, 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 to the Israelite army was so scary. So scary. To the point, the Israelite army, they were looking like grasshoppers. They were looking like they will not make it. They were so scared. Because Goliath was a huge man with a vast experience of a warrior. And that was the army commander, the leader of the Philistines. And he was bragging so much, speaking a lot of mockery, blasphemy to the God of Israel. And one interesting thing that you'll discover, when his brother Eliab sees David talking to, to his fellow army men in Israel of, of, the Israelite, of the Israel army. We find Eliab getting disturbed. He gets disturbed. He begins to scold David. How have you come here? And who has brought you here? What have you come to do here? I would expect Eliab to be excited because the brother has come, has brought him some food. He has come to encourage them. But the, to the contrary, we find Eliab is not happy. And the story continues. David sing the kind of and the level of mockery this Philistine man was you know throwing insults to, to, the, to the God of Israel. David was not happy. Hallelujah. And now we find David being a small boy. He ignores the potential danger that befell him if he was to fight Goliath. Then he said, with all this blasphemy, I must put things right here and fight for the God of Israel. And then we find him is being taken to the king Saul. And we find also Saul talking some words 
of discouragement to David, telling me, you're a young man, there's very little you can do, you can't face these people. But David, being a brave young man, with the experience of a shepherd, having protected his father's sheep from the wild, wild beasts and the lion, he had such great faith in his God. He was so brave, he said, I must face this giant. And the story ends so beautifully. We see David conquering this Goliath, conquering this giant called Goliath. Praise the Lord. That's the story I would like you in your good time, in your personal reflection, in your close door fellowship with God. Have a wonderful time to read it through. Let God speak to you through this story of David and Goliath. And I can assure you, God is going to minister to you so, so, so powerfully. He has ministered to me so, so powerfully. And this is what I want to talk to us, brethren in this house and those who may be listening to me. The truth is that in our lives, in our daily life, when we wake up every morning, when we face each day, the truth is that we face or we are faced with giants in our lives. Giants who speak blasphemy against our God. Blasphemy against our God. The devil knows that you are a covenant child. That those promises God has promised you as his covenant child. He has promised healing upon your life. He has promised victory. He has promised provision in your life. And sometimes we forget to know that, to recognize that, to recognize who we are in the Lord. We fail to recognize that we are covenant children. God has promised great things regarding our lives. And his promises are true. He's a God who keeps his covenant. He keeps his promises. He's a God who doesn't change. When he says that you are blessed, oh, truly, you are blessed. When he says, I'll provide for you, oh, truly, he means exactly that. He will provide for you. When he says, I'll protect you, he means exactly that. He will protect you. Oh. Because he is a promise keeper. And therefore, that's the God we serve. But now we see many times we are faced with giants who come in our life trying to challenge that which God has spoken regarding our lives. This your God cannot do it for you. He'll not make it. This 
your God will not help you. You will not manage in this battle. He blasphemes our God. This chance come to us roaring fire. Oh, roaring fire. The way they present themselves to us. Oh. The way they present themselves in the, you know, in their warrior's garments. The way they have put themselves is so terrifying. When you see them in their warrior's gear, you look at them and say, oh, now I am just finished. Because they look so huge. And you look at them, you compare yourself with them, you see yourself as though you're just but a mere grasshopper. And now fear begins to enter you. And when now fear enters you, faith comes out of you. And now you reach to a point which now the enemy loves most. Deny this your God. This your God cannot do it for you. This your God cannot help you win this battle. Deny him! And when you reach that point of defeat of saying I'll deny I deny this my God that's the time now the enemy celebrates the most there are giants my brothers we undergo giants emotional giants fear Worry. What will happen tomorrow? Anxiety. Mental giants. Stresses. Some of us, we don't sleep. We're always having nightmares. You don't know what will happen to you. Physical giants. Illnesses, sicknesses that have refused to go away. Financial giants, oh. Financial giants, you are enslaved. You are worried. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. They may come for you and your entire household because you owe them money. Financial giants. And the whole purpose and objective of these giants coming to you, facing you, is to demean your God. To demean your God. Ani mungu wako haonekane kanakomba he is useless God. He's a God who cannot save you. He's not a powerful God. The whole idea, the objective of these giants is to pull down your faith in God. To shift your faith into other things is to make you feel defeated. And therefore, this chance, we must crush them today. We must crush them today. And today, I want to take us through some three points which I believe that are going to help me and also to help you know how to conquer your giants.
praise the Lord. Three points. And then we shall have some good time to pray. Hallelujah. Some three steps that if you and me, if we embraced these points or these three steps, they will help us to slay down the giants in our lives. And remember, as we are sharing all this, we are reflecting on 1 Samuel chapter 17. The whole chapter of 1 Samuel 17. Number one step that I believe that you and me, if we impressed, it will help us to conquer these giants in our lives. Number one. We need to identify. We need to know who is your giant. You need to identify your giant. The problem that is eating you is very important as a warrior. It's very important for you to identify your enemy to identify your giant. And why do I say this? Many a time we have failed in the battle simply because we do not understand our giant very well. Yes, we know that there is a giant that I'm facing. Yes, we know that there is a problem I am facing. Yes, we know that there is a giant I must conquer. But yet, we don't know this giant very well. Hatumujui kabisa. Sometimes, we shift ourselves into a blame game. Maybe there is a problem that is eating you as a family. That is wearing you down as a family. And because you fail to know what exactly the problem is. Oh. You shift it into a blame game. You begin to see your husband as the problem. You begin to see your wife as the problem. You begin to see your children as the problem. You begin to see your brother, your sister as the problem. And you miss the mark. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What happens in this Israel army? You see... When the Israel army went into war with this Philistine, the sons of Jesse, the three older sons of Jesse, they also accompanied them into that army. And one older son called Eliab was also there. But you see what happens to Eliab. When his younger brother is sent by the father to come and bring them some food, to come and find out how they were faring on in the battlefield, what happens to Eliab? He shifts his attention from who the real giant was. He shifts his eyes from the real giant. He now begins to see another giant. He begins to see his younger brother as the problem and forgets 
that the real giant that they are being faced with was Goliath. We see Eliab beginning to scold his younger brother David. How have you come here? What have you come here to do? You are the problem. Whom have you left the ship with? Meaning in other words he's telling you you must go back immediately. What have you come to do here? Now he's wasting a lot of his energy on scolding his younger brother Eliab. Instead of focusing on the real giant who was Goliath. And some I understand Eliab. You know, he was in that battlefield, a terrified man. The kind of roaring he had heard from Goliath was so terrifying. A huge man, gigantic. Ooh. A man who had lost no battle, had not lost it in the battle. A man who had the experience from his youth to win battles. The man who was speaking so big. So by the kind and the way Goliath was roaring had already instilled fear into Eliab. Eliab was not seeing himself as a covenant child of God. God who has promised him that he'll fight for him his battles. Alikuwa mejisahau. Alikuwa amesahaya kumbe is a covenant son, a covenant child. God has promised victory for him. He had forgotten all about that. All was instilled into him was fear because of the kind of Goliath, the kind of giant that was facing him. And that's, sometimes that's how we are. Our giant, we look at our giants that are so huge in comparison with what we can do ourselves. We see ourselves as grasshoppers and therefore you are already defeated even before the, the war begins. Like you know, Shida Elia Balikwa Nayo. Yeye Tari Alikua Ame Shindwa. Ane Ame Ame Jamulia Kwamba Ye Tari Ame Shindwa. Na Hata Haja Anza Vita Badu. And that's very dangerous. When you find yourself in that box whereby you feel you already defeated even before you begin the war, blame game begins. You start seeing your wife as the problem. Where would you sit down? Where would you sit down? Where would you sit down? We begin now seeing infights within the family. Mama na mzee wanapigana pale. Watoto na wazazi wanapigana pale. What oh wanapigana pale. Ndugu wanapigana wenyewe kwa wenyewe. Oh watu wanapigana wenyewe kwa wenyewe. People who loved themselves each other one day. People who used to call themselves oh siri my sweetheart. Oh boy my dad. Oh people who used to love them each other. People who used to speak well. Kwa kila mmoja na mwingine. We now start seeing them fighting each other. When Hansa Kopigana Vita, when Apigana Wenyewe Kwa Wenyewe, simply because they have failed to identify who their giant is. How I pray this morning, God will help you and me to identify the real giants that we are being faced with. God will help you and me to understand the giant that is eating us as a country. Praise the Lord. It's until we identify these giants 
that we'll be able to face this giant head on. Hallelujah. And be able to slay it in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pigesu Makofi Mazuri. Hallelujah. We need to identify the giants in our lives. Hallelujah. I was just wondering. Many of our marriage problems, and I speak this with a lot of humility, because I'm equally a married person. So if it touches you in any way, I'm speaking this with a lot of humility, bearing in mind that I'm equally a married man. Many of our marriage problems, many of the giants that we face in our marriages. You will discover that when we are talking to each other and everybody is taking his own side, blame game, saying you are the problem, you are the problem, you are the problem, you are the problem. And we call upon the man of God to come and mediate to come and try to help us. And he comes, he talks to us. He goes back to his house, his home, to his family, and he leaves the two of us there. And you find again, those problems again, they are recurring, recurring. And because now you don't want to have the shame from, from the man of God whom you called previously. You now decide now to suffer in silence. You have a problem, you're fighting each other, but now this time round you're doing it in silence. You don't want the man of God to know again because it's like he came with a solution, yet the solution has not been found. You feel ashamed to go back to him again and tell him, man of God, we still have this problem. We are still fighting. We are still having no peace. And then you discover, really, the problem is not any one of you. You have a giant that is eating you up that you have not identified. The quicker, the faster you identified this giant and discover that you are covenant children and discover the promises of God regarding you as, a coven, as covenant children, then the solution is found. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Call it whatever problem it is. This man is not bad. It's not good. It's not in any way the problem. The only problem you have is a giant called a financial giant. That's all that you need to know. Honey, the problem is not you. Darling, the problem is not you. Our problem is a financial challenge that we're being faced with. When I was having my job and earning my salary, life was so good. It was okay. Why is it that when the job went away, now we began to have our problems? You discover this is a financial challenge. He's a financial giant. And then now you face him head on. 
praise the Lord. You face him head on, knowing that you are covenant children. God has promises for you. Promises that are yes and amen. He doesn't fail in his promises. You begin to trust in him. And somehow, he provides a way for you. He bails you out of that challenge. Don't be like Eliab. He begins now to pour his frustrations to David and fails to see Goliath as his giant. So point number one, which I'm praying that it will help you and me. We need to identify exactly who our giant is. And face this giant heads on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Problem or step number two. Step number two. We need to get a proper perspective of our situation. In First Samuel seventeen thirty three, and King David and King Saul said to David, "You are not able to go." against this Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. Getting a proper perspective of your problem. You know what Saul along with anyone else in the army, was faced with. All they were seeing was a huge Goliath. A gigantic Goliath. You know, a man whose outlook itself was enough to make you feel defeated. This is what I would like us to say. Let us have a proper perspective of your issues before you begin to fight them. Understand what is eating you very well. There's what was soul's perspective. And there is what was David's perspective. Saul's perspective, listen to it. Saul's perspective, he tells David, Goliath is a strong man. You are but a very tiny thing in his eyes. Saul tells David as his perspective that you are just a shepherd boy. How will you fight against a man who has a vast experience in battles from his youth. Saul's perspective was, Goliath will defeat you. He can do it. But for you, David, you are a very small thing before, before his eyes. You will not make it. That was the human perspective. But I love the perspective that David had. I mean, yes, that David had. David's perspective, which was God's perspective. And this is what David says to Saul. He tells him, your servant, 
that's now he's talking about himself. Right? This is now David talking about himself. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, Philistine will be like one of them. Seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. First Samuel 17, 36. David, he looks at himself from the perspective that God sees him. I don't know. How do we see ourselves when we are faced with giants? Do we see ourselves from the perspective that God sees us? David speaks so bravely about himself. He says, oh, when I was taking care of my father's sheep, you know, I was able to, to defend them from the hands of the land, the bear, of the, of, 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 of the wild bears and, and the lion. I was able to, to snatch them from the lion's teeth. In other words, I'm brave. And if I was able to do that, who is this Philistine? This uncircumcised Philistine. You know, circumcision, that mark of circumcision, according to the children of Israel, it indicated, it was, it was a mark that kept on reminding them of the covenant that they had made God. That God was going to be with them all the time. That God was going to protect them. That God was going to provide them. And if he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this man who has no covenant at all with God? Who is this man? I'm going to face him. Look at that confidence. And that's the confidence I wish that this morning we have. The perspective of God regarding our circumstances. James 2, 1, 2, 5 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. You can reshape that word and say when you are faced with various giants. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And what happens to be this patience when it's made perfect? You are made complete, lacking nothing. And it says, if you lack wisdom, Ask him from God who gives it to all people liberally without reproach. So zingine, tunapo jikuta katika hali ambazo nitatanish, ambazo tuko na majitu ambao ya natuandama. Before we begin doing blame game or think of what to do, can we humbly go before the Lord and ask God for wisdom. What is a mungu? Mungu. Now I'm in this corner, Lord. Grant me the wisdom on what to do here. And you'll be surprised. God giving you the wisdom that you need. And maybe just to help us even understand what wisdom means. Wisdom means having a higher perspective. Higher perspective. Katika lugha ya kiunani, it is Sophia. You know, having a higher perspective. Seeing things from a perspective that no one else sees it. Sophia. Wisdom. Number three point that I like you and me 
God helping us to take home. Speak to your giant. Speak to your giant. We see David speaking to his giant. What does he say? This day, oh, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. And I'll strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I'll give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Speak to a giant. Don't glorify your giant. There's a difference. Speaking to your giant and speaking about your giant. Many times we speak about our giant. You are glorifying your giant. He feels celebrated. But as a covenant child, you don't need to speak about your giant. Speak to, it. Speak to your giant regarding the promises of God. What God has promised you as his covenant child. Speak to your giant. Tell it. God is bringing it in my hands. I'm going to take away your head. I'm going to slay you in the name of Jesus. Speak faith. Speak victory. Confess positive things regarding your giant in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling you, when we do that, when we do that, the victory is assured. God is going to give you the wisdom to slay your giant. Yes, your giant may be coming to you in the name of the spears and the sword and the javelin and the armor. But God will give you a wisdom that is very simple that you will use to slay down your giant. And I tell you what, all the world will celebrate you. Everybody will celebrate you. Everybody will acknowledge and say, indeed, there's a God in Israel. Everybody will celebrate and say, oh, indeed, this is a covenant child. This is a child of God. His God is life. His God is able in the name of Jesus. Shall we stand together and just go before the Lord? Hallelujah. Let's stand and just have some good time to go before the Lord. Hallelujah. If that word was your word, I want to believe that there is that which you have picked that is of great help to you. And maybe I may ask this question. Who is your giant this morning? Do you know your giant very well? Do you know your giant very well? From which perspective do you look at your giant? 
is, your, is it your own personal perspective or it is the God's perspective? If you are looking at your giant from, the God, from God's perspective, we can make a prayer this morning that God will grant you a wisdom on how to face your giant. It will not be the usual blame game that we have blamed each other. But we'll know from today who is your who is your giant and how to face it. Like David did using a stone and a sling he was able to pull down his giant. It is possible for you. I want to raise you, raise your hand before the Lord. Because you know yourself very well. Have some moment of reflection. Reflect on your life. What is this that is troubling you? What is this that is eating you? What is this that is pulling your faith down? What is this that is wearing you? Lift it before the Lord. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk it over to God. Speak to God regarding that whatever your giant is. God is able, very able to help you defeat him in the name of Jesus. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak to God regarding your giant. Speak to God. Speak to God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank you this wonderful morning. Indeed, it is true. We are faced with many giants in our lives. But one thing, Lord, we thank you, God, for is that we are covenant children. You're a God who has promised victory in our lives. You have God who has great promises regarding us as your children, Lord. Grant us that wisdom that we need to defeat our giants in the name of Jesus. We celebrate you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you. We shall give our